In Greek mythology, the Echidna is this half woman, half snake um, being that is considered the mother of all monsters. Um, oh. Uh, apparently it's also the name of an adorable species of Australian egg-laying mammal that looks like someone crossbred porcupine, hedgehog, and an anteater. So, we're looking at a family game where these little guys have been cartoonified, and they are starring in their own board game adventure. Uh, let's take a look! In Echidna Shuffle, all players control a parade of Echidna figurines. To begin, players place their matching color marker on any spot on the board. Then, they hand their three stumps to the player on their left to place on the board. The object of the game is to pick up your three bugs and bring them to the nearest stumps of your color. Anytime an echidna figure is on a space with a color marker, they pick up the corresponding bug, if there are any left. On a player's turn, they roll a custom die that reads 2 to 7, and place their marker on the top of the board with the corresponding number that they rolled. They then have that many movement points for the turn. On their next turn, they simply slide their marker to the lower number and receive that many movements. They roll again on the turn after that. With their movement points, players attempt to pick up and deliver their set of bugs to their stumps. Each action point can be used to move any echidna on the board, so long as it follows the movement rules. When an echidna lands on the marker to pick up a bug, it never lets go of it until it reaches the correct stump. Players use action points to move the parade, shuffling them so as best to obtain their goal. Echidnas can never occupy the same space or jump over each other, and they must adhere to the directional rules of the board. When a bug is brought to the correct stump, both are removed from the board. When someone has collected all three bugs and all three stumps, they win the game. Echidna Shuffle is first and foremost adorable. Like, ridiculously so. My boss who played this as well currently has a picture that another coworker took of one of the pieces as her desktop background. In terms of weight, it's on the lighter end of the spectrum, for sure, making this far more a family-style game than a weighty practice and strategy. Despite it being a family weight game, it can't just get a pass for some of its shortcomings. The dependence on another player's placement of stumps is going to be pivotal in creating a fair game. Someone could, purposefully or not, create a much less challenging game for a single player in comparison to everyone else. This comes from the variable setup in which the difficulty is essentially determined by each individual player. This could also be reversed in the latter part of the game, but not in a good way. If it's apparent that one player is going to be the clear winner, everyone else can and arguably should spend action points to make winning near impossible for that player. And that requires both foresight and vindictive determination to do, but it's apparently not a fringe case as there's a variant to prevent this from happening. That's another thing. At least in this prototype, the rulebook has a number of variants, all used to fix various aspects of the core game. It was a little concerning reading through these, as I would hope that these issues would have been considered and remedied in the design process. Again, this isn't a heavy game. You're really only going to run into these issues in instances of pretty extreme competitiveness. In our experience, the majority of the time we were so focused on our own path that we didn't have time to attempt to utterly destroy each other. I love that this is so easy to teach. It offers a puzzly interface that feels a lot like Rush Hour, the game where you're shifting cars on a grid, but in an interesting multiplayer way. Instead of just playing against the grid, you're dealing with other busy players. And this is a great mix of inviting aesthetics and simple mechanics that will draw people in. The game length is breezy, and that initial aspect of placing your opponent's stumps is pivotal, but not to the point of ruining a whole evening. The little grid where you roll then slide to the next set of action points is a great way to mitigate the randomness of the dice, and everything just works together to make sense. As always, the important thing is that this is a fun game. And come on, this is a ridiculously charming little gem. I have multiple co-workers asking where to get this for the pieces alone. Ridiculously cute doesn't adequately describe these little echidnas. The production quality, if the prototype is any indication, is phenomenal. This is a fantastic game for families with younger kids, or anyone that's okay with some of the issues I stated above. And I really can't overstate the production value of this game. I'm giddy with the prospect of seeing a full production copy of this. It's simple, fun, and the theme ties so well right into the charming look of the game. So, I'm participating in this Clash of Creator Star Realms tournament. Cheese. And there is... Cheese. In-game Star Realms name Bruce LaPluma. Ah. 
I really screwed up on the branding. That's that's my fault. Cheese! 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 Okay. <laughs> Bruce, I need you to not touch the camera, kid. Cheese! Cheese! <laughs> Kiddo! Don't touch! Don't touch! Cheese! 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 Ah! Now go find Mama. Drums tournament in which. Cheese! 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 